MasterChef is all about letting you unleash your culinary creativity and present your absolute best dishes. But unfortunately, this particular contestant did not quite make the most of that opportunity. Season one, when the top three critics were in for an unexpected twist. I'm talking about season 11, when things took a turn for the worse for one particular home cook. While the judges were all excited to try some incredible dishes, Whitney boldly served a pan-seared sculpin with a little special ingredient. Wondering what it was? Well, check this out. Um, I actually used the tomatoes out of the can. Yep. Canned tomatoes. A staple in my kitchen, maybe, but in the MasterChef kitchen? Come on, they got some beautiful fresh ones right over there. That little secret of hers left the judges stunned. You could almost see the blood drain from their faces. What's more, none of them were actually interested to even taste the dish anymore. And Whitney kinda got wind of it, too. Thank you. But you have to agree. Whether it's out of ignorance or stupidity, Whitney made a bold move with those canned tomatoes. Despite Ramsay's disdain for canned food, she chose to go ahead with it anyway. However, nobody was anywhere near impressed. I mean, forget about the tomato part. Nothing about the dish felt right. The garlic is overpowering. I can't really taste the fish because there's so much garlic in my mouth. Surprisingly, Whitney was pretty happy with her dish. Going by the critics' feedback, I really wonder if she even tasted it before serving an entire pantry's worth of salt and garlic. However, when it was time to reveal the results, Ramsay gasped in disbelief. So, let's see where Whitney's efforts landed her on the scoreboard, shall we? A five out of 12. That person is. Yep, she barely managed to score five mm. points. That's it. In hindsight, I think the critics were kind to even award her a score. Had it been for Ramsey, he would have disqualified her right then and there. But Ramsey still had the chance to throw her through the ringer, and he didn't mince his words. He called her out on her choice and asked her a single question. Why tell the harshest critics anywhere in the world today that you're serving them canned tomatoes? But Whitney just stood there, stock still. It was hard to tell if she was taking it all in stride or if there was something deeper running inside her head. Did she forget she was on MasterChef? But I mean, of course she was upset. That much is fair. But despite Ramsey's crystal clear explanation, it's crazy how she still couldn't understand what had gone wrong. The results are not what I expected at all. I'm really upset. <laughs> However, that little emotional roller coaster was totally worth it, because this contestant actually made some fans overnight. Viewers pulled in their support, and even lauded her for her humility and, of course, um, beauty. I mean, this isn't Miss International, but at least they're being respectful about it. And Whitney probably could feel this love right through the screens, and she didn't let those tears take control. She wiped them away, stood strong, and boldly declared she was going to fight back. Talk about a comeback story. But now, let's head over to this next episode from season three, where chaos was running wild. If you ask me, I don't think there was a single dull moment in episode 10. But for today's list, let's throw the spotlight on David, shall we? In my opinion, David never really stood out to me. He was messy right from the start of his journey, and well, his dishes weren't exactly appetizing. I mean, just take a look at what he served and tell me you'd throw your lot in with him. I roasted the potatoes in the pizza stone, I did the bacon in the pizza stone, and I did the uh, lobster on the pizza stone as well. Well, I know I'd pass on this, but let's see what the judges have to say. This looks really bad. I mean, if it's not good enough for me, no chance it'd be good enough for Ramsay and friends. Chef Graham threw shade at the soupy mess because, well, it looked like it was straight out of a horror movie. And then it was time for Joe. Oh boy, Joe. Well, love him or hate him, he didn't hesitate to swoop right in with the ever classic, you expect me to eat this? But wait, that was just the beginning. What was to come was insane. You see this? This is And there goes the most important dish of Brian's life. But wait, there's more to the story. We haven't heard from Ramsey yet, have we? But when he came up to Brian, I could practically feel the disappointment radiating off of him. 
And well, he managed to convey his disapproval without even uttering a single word. He literally hung his head in dismay. He couldn't even look David in the eye. Yeah, that's when you know you screwed up. After dishing out some monumental dishes in the past, how could David fall so low? But finally, Ramsay found his words. David, you've had some pretty monumental dishes and you just fell a thousand foot with nothing underneath it. It's a great shame. Ouch, that must have stung real bad. Ramsey really knows how to make someone feel like they made the worst mistake of their life. And this one just might be David's last on the show. You could practically see David's face fall as he witnessed the catastrophe that he was responsible for. And all he could say in his defense was this. You know, sometimes planes crash, and that's what happens. Well, at least he acknowledged that he messed up. Unlike Whitney, who had no idea why the judges were so upset. But I hope you're ready for this next one from season four, when Lin Chi stepped up to the plate. Oh, wow. I mean... Wow. I, I mean, how many times have you seen Ramsey react like that? It looks like Lin might have just whipped up the best dish of his life after all. Well, kudos to him. And check it out, Chef Graham couldn't hold himself back from calling it incredible. He had to actually take his glasses off to appreciate Lin's work of art with his own eyes. Damn, it looks like it was Lin's lucky day. But wait, did you catch Lin's expression? Why does it look like he's saying, okay, I messed up, but seriously, do we need to roll out that kind of sarcasm? Well. I think he had no idea what it really feels like to be humiliated, until Joe decided to take center stage. Did you drive over it? What is it? Ah, <sighs> Joe, not gonna lie, even in the most serious situations, he always knows what to say, whether you or I would want to hear it. Here I was, sweating bullets, wondering if Lynn's dish would find a new home in the trash. But before getting into that, Joe was looking for some clarity. He couldn't even understand what he was looking at. But before Lynn could explain his dish, Joe made sure to drop a quick reminder. This was the elimination round, and screwing up here would cost him the game. What followed next was Ramsey's critique. And this is what he had to say. It looks like you slipped and cow baked it. He then went on to say that it tasted like an insulator with strawberries or a banana in there. And then out of nowhere, he dropped another bomb. You are close to getting kicked out of this competition. Yikes, how could you, Lin? MasterChef is all about putting your best foot forward, and it looks like you screwed up big time. I have no idea how Ramsey was being as patient as he was, but he did make it a point to tell him this. That is the worst dish I have seen on a plate in four years of MasterChef. Yeah, he called it the worst dish he'd ever tasted on the show. Well, the worst he's tasted so far. You got like nine more seasons to get through, buddy. But anyway, after that remark, how can you expect Joe to sit back and do nothing about it? He took the opportunity to give Lynn another piece of his mind. Ah, uh, Lynn, unbelievable. They raise you up so high, and then... And well, it was time for Joe to pull out his signature move. Looks like Lynn's food eventually did make it into the trash. It's back among its people. And what's more, Joe then presented the empty plate to Lynn so he could carry it home as a memento. Get the hint? It was time for Lynn to pack his bags. Most viewers couldn't stomach Lynn's abrupt end to his MasterChef journey. Well, of course there were more contestants who were worse than him, but Ramsey's feedback was deadly serious. It was the worst dish in the history of the show. And there's no place for anyone to remain in the competition after horrifying feedback like that. However, in this next episode from season three, things got a little bit too intense when Helene chose to make some bold claims. Well, I haven't seen you win anything yet. I've been struggling. You've been struggling. I've been Why? struggling because I don't work well under pressure, and I need to. I know where my weakness is. I need to find. Don't work well under pressure. You know what, guys? I think she might be stressed just a little bit. I don't know. Call it a hunch. And Joe, who's always waiting for an opportunity to strike, pointed out a rather interesting achievement. You've done a great job of. Um taking a beautiful $60 Dungeness crab and making it 
making it taste exactly like canned crab. Yikes. That takes tongue lashing to a whole new level. Meanwhile, Chef Graham added his two cents by saying she is from the east, which is like a crab hole, referring to the frequent use of seafood over there. Helene's crab soup, however, was a surprise even to herself. She couldn't believe how it turned out thicker than she expected, but the tension kept ramping up. He was taken aback by the flavor of the dish, and not in a good way. Is that salt on top of the uh, cornbread? I did add salt to the... Uh... Added it or dipped it in it? Damn, Ramsey always has a way with words, doesn't he? It really does never get old. And then, the moment of truth. Ramsey continued laying down the law, saying if Helene were to ask for $24 for this dish, he wouldn't even give her 25 cents. Ouch, that's quite the blow. In the aftermath, Helene expressed a mix of emotions, saying she was shocked, surprised, embarrassed, and that the whole situation was basically a disaster. It's clear that the pressure of the competition and the scrutiny from the judges was taking a toll on her confidence. But succumbing to the pressure on MasterChef is lights out, even for the best home cooks. But in the 14th episode of season 5, Chef Graham was backing Christian like never before. But soon, the situation took a turn for the worse. What happened is, despite all that support, the final result fell far short of expectations. As they inspected Christian's dish, they uncovered something that raised a ton of eyebrows. Trust me, this was truly shocking. <sighs> I burnt one of my pot stickers. How could that have happened? Like, after all the time and effort, that's what you came up with. Come on. As the tension thickened, they kept digging into it with their words, not their forks. They become like rubber balls. They were pretty damn disappointed, if you ask me. I mean, no sauce, no garnish. Look at that. You, you guys are better than that. It's just sad. Turns out, Christian's dish lacked the most important component, the sauce. I mean, the sauce is boss for a reason. And then it was time for another twist. The judges seized the opportunity to teach him a vital lesson. They went into the nuances of steaming, revealing its hidden complexities. While it seems simple, doing it wrong can turn food rubbery in seconds. But the big moment finally came when Ramsey stepped in. Who seasoned the cabbage? I did. You better believe this guy never holds back with his criticism, least of all here. Season. Disgusting. Ramsey's disappointment was definitely valid. And just to twist the knife, there wasn't a speck of salt to speak of anywhere in the dish. It's always the seasoning. Big Willie pitched in to take the blame. However, that didn't stop Ramsey from calling the dish disgusting. And rightfully so. Ramsey questioned the seriousness and commitment of Willie and Christian to the competition. But what he said next was what really got me. Take a look. You both don't deserve to be in this competition. Can you believe that he actually suggested that none of them deserve to be on the show solely based on this one dish? But yeah, that was the end for Big Willie, at the very least. Your journey ends tonight in the MasterChef kitchen. Please say goodnight to Christian. But... Here comes another contestant, whose dish was even worse than the one that got Willie eliminated. Slim, who took part in season one, had put a lot at stake just to come on the show. She had given up on her graduation from Loyola and put all her eggs in the MasterChef basket. The time came for her to present her dish, and things didn't exactly go as planned. So when Ramsey inspected Slim's dish, you won't believe what happened. Put them on a stick. You've got to at least cut the fat off. How could she not trim the fat? That's like the most basic step. But that wasn't close to being all. There's a lot of ginger in the sauce, right? Yes, sir. Ramsey saw the truckload of ginger in the sauce from miles away. And boy, did he let her know about it. But he still wasn't done. If we're on a date and you cook that dish for me, I'd go to the bathroom and you'd never see me again. Yeah, I bet he would. And then, the moment we've all been waiting for, or dreading, Joe came on the scene. And calling him unhappy would be the understatement of the century. This is like a, a buffet gone bad. 
Go back to your station. I'm not tasting this crap. You guys have to, at this point in the competition, you need to be listening to what we're telling you about what we're producing because this is ridiculous. That was brutal. To see all your efforts just tossed into the trash like it's nothing? Heartbreaking. But hey, you know how much Joe loves doing that, but I haven't even gotten to what Joe had to say yet. A buffet gone bad. I'm not tasting this crap. This is ridiculous. Can you imagine the embarrassment? But that's not all, since he dialed it up to 11 by talking about how Salim can't be wasting their time like this. And trust me, the entire room was dead quiet with the thickest tension you'll ever see, feel, or hear. Or, well, not hear. The episode left everybody hanging, pondering the aftermath of all this and how it would affect Slim. Thing is, she was still working on making her mark with the judges and the viewers, which I don't think was going quite well for her. But the next one on my list gives her a run for her money for sure. In season nine, episode 11, Mark's arrogance took center stage. I've made it better over this way. It's faster, a double boiler takes too long. You have plenty of time. Do you want to make it right? Or do you want I gotta to make it right this way. This is the way my father taught me and I'll continue to do it forever. The astronomical doesn't even describe the half of it with how he dismissed Aaron's advice on making Bernays sauce correctly. Wrong move, buddy. And then he went on to defend his way, insisting it was faster and better. Even Joe's attempt to explain the importance of tried and true technique fell on deaf ears. Fast forward to the time when Ramsey finally intervened. And Ramsey, you see, had a lot to say. Making a Bernays sauce is difficult. And the reason why we put over double boilers, we cook the eggs into a savion, which then takes on the clarified butter. What he said next really drove his point home. He pointed out Mark's undercooked egg yolks and made it clear how disappointed he was. The pressure in the room had skyrocketed. And then it's gonna be just a very simple mint buttercream for the topping. Make it happen. Thank you. As the pressure test kicked in, Mark's attitude proved to be a persistent thorn in his own side. He tossed in strawberries at the last minute, turning things into a watery disaster. That's like chemistry 101. Come on, S. John. Let's go. Three seconds to go. I don't have all my cupcakes in the box. Wow. But wait, there's more. Struggling to manage time, Mark fumbled and failed to get all the cupcakes into the box. And boy, was Ramsey not pleased. <laughs> Your boy right here. To make matters worse, he thought laughing it off was gonna fix it. But even with all that tension and Ramsey's disappointment and criticism, Mark stood his ground arguing that his opinions were being mistaken for arrogance. Ramsey, however, didn't back down. He emphasized that Mark was completely in the wrong. Yeah, Mark's departure was inevitable. However, I think season four, episode eight, has got even this moment beat. The red team was caught serving raw chicken. Who was responsible, you ask? It was none other than Luca. But hark, doth that be the sound of Ramsey's fury on the horizon? It is. He was furious, and those raw burgers weren't going anywhere near the tables. Joe wasn't too pleased either. What? It's raw. I didn't want Let me go show the kitchen. Let me come back. Chef, these burgers oh no, are completely raw. I mean, raw again. But the red team was back again with raw burgers. It looks like Luca had some explaining to do. Kathy wasn't happy either. He knew what he was doing. So then if you know what you're doing, the burgers should be medium rare and you should know how to cook it. She believed he had it under control, but those medium rare mishaps were piling up. But amidst the chaos, she got her game face on. With her priorities straight, she left the burger drama behind and put her eyes on the prize. Meanwhile, Ramsey told the contestants to take their aprons off. He also told them to get ready to whip up the best 12 burgers of their lives. And by the way, who were these VIPs? You? Welcome. Hey, sir. It's all the other contestants. Nice to see you guys. The former contestants? Talk about a plot twist. But Luca had a strategy up his sleeve. But would he be able to execute it and snag the win? Well, soon enough, the customers were chowing down and the VIPs were casting their votes. But guess what? 
<laughs> yeah, the blue team snatched the win, even without serving all their burgers. That alone should tell you how bad it was for Luca and friends on the red team. But you have to see what happened in this next mystery box challenge from season two to believe it. There was this one dish that went completely off track lacking meat or protein of any kind, and to top it off, it was just weird as hell. Any guesses whose dish it was? Yep, it was Christian's brainchild. And let me tell you, his expression was worth a thousand words. The perfect combination of both shock and disbelief. When Joe dropped the bomb that the judges were disappointed with the subpar performance, Christian pushed back with a shocking statement. Bar, we were very disappointed. I think you're wrong. I don't think my dish is the worst dish here. But wait, there's more. Astro's dish looked pretty Yep, that's right. Christian went on to diss Ashley's dish. Man, don't bring her into this. But things further heated up when Joe stepped in and took charge of the situation. Can you imagine the tension in the air? But that's when Ramsey delivered a zinger at exactly the right moment. Well, we're trying to give you constructive criticism. If you're a man, you take it on the chin. Ooh, that's got a smart. You see, it's not just about attitude, it's about talent. Ramsey made it clear that while Christian might be a skilled cook, his attitude wasn't measuring up. Well, it's high time contestants understand that the judges expect them to serve food, not attitude. But this next episode from season five took a dramatic turn. And trust me, Ramsey's reaction to Dan and Cutter's dish is second to none. As Ramsey set his eyes on the plate, his response was immediate, strong, and obvious. What in the f is that? I am so embarrassed. He was visibly taken aback, and let me tell you, you could almost see him fuming. Like, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear smoke was coming out of his ears. They had access to the usual amazing pantry that rivaled even the best restaurants. And yet, this plate's reality was far from that impressive stock. Ramsey's embarrassment was evident, and he demanded answers. And the answers he got amounted to nothing but finger pointing. He just starts grabbing, and this is what you get. Ran out of time in the pantry, then I have nothing to work with. We went in there, I gave my idea, he gave his idea. We grabbed the proteins, and we started from there. Cutter blamed Dan, but there was more going on beneath the surface. Miscommunication was at its peak, as Dan suggested an idea Cutter disliked, and this led to a whole new level of chaos. The thing is, Cutter felt their dish was decent enough, but Ramsey, you have to listen to this. But the most unexpected moment was yet to come. When Cutter told Joe not to taste the dish, he shut him down immediately. And that's when Joe did the unthinkable. <laughs> Do the honors. Yep, that's right. He actually brought a trash can on stage and ordered them to throw the food away. Wow, you know it's bad when not even Joe wants to do the honors of throwing it away. Now, this has to be one of the most dramatic moments in MasterChef history. And that's saying something for a show known for its drama. Wait a minute, check out this absolute monstrosity. It is wild. So during the elimination round, things didn't go as planned for Mark. Mark decided to whip up peppercorn filet with a Bernays sauce along with whipped rosemary garlic potatoes. Basically a typical French dish, but guess what? Have you ever been to France? No. French cookbooks? French no. restaurants? No. Okay. Yeah, this guy didn't know the first thing about French cuisine. And here he was, going in fully blind, yet somehow filled with confidence. So when time finally ran out and he had to present his dish, you can say he didn't exactly win any medal. I have a filet crusted peppercorn, a creamy rosemary garlic mashed with a bernice sauce. Not only did it look boring, but it also had some major problems. And Joe didn't even taste it before he started to pick it in. You normally put Bernays sauce on your steak? French. Not many French people I know, but... Oh boy. Dude should have looked in a cookbook first, I think. And the fact that he didn't hit the books before going in blind was going to be his undoing. Then Joe pointed out the texture of the mashed potatoes, which were far from appetizing. Does the consistency look nice? You like the thickness of it? I would have liked them a little thicker. Thicker than that? So the problem was that they were thick and gooey. 
but Mark over here would have liked them even thicker. Now, imagine if he did make them thicker like he'd initially planned to. Joe probably would have kicked him to the curb right then and there. But back in our version of events, Joe wasn't impressed. But when he finally got around to tasting it, he was beyond shocked. Raw liquidy. It's raw flour in here. What? Joe was visibly taken aback. And it wasn't made with traditional ingredients alone. Mark snuck in an unwelcome and decidedly not traditional addition. Raw flour. Apparently, the mashed potatoes were too runny, and Mark thought that adding raw flour would help. But clearly, it didn't. I mean, come on. Being on a cooking show and not knowing how to whip up mashed potatoes of all things? One of the simplest dishes? What is this, amateur hour? Now, I've been going on and on about Joe's reaction. So, how do you think Ramsey took it? Well... There are several things that you can never do in cooking, and adding flour to a liquid mashed potato is one of them. In the end, Mark couldn't help but acknowledge his mistake. He knew that he had screwed up big time, and there was no way he could save himself. And just like he expected, thanks to this one mistake, he was sent home packing. But hey, at least when it comes to serving up some pretty messed up dishes, Mark is in good company. If you ask me, I think Jennifer's dish from season two, episode seven, was an even bigger disaster. What happened is, during the mystery box challenge, the contestants were tasked with preparing lamb. Easy peasy, right? But that's when Jennifer ended up making a hasty decision. Originally, I was just gonna stick with my lollipop chops. Maybe I should try to throw it on there. I figured that I would have enough time. She decided to use a whole bunch of the lamb, thinking she had enough time to cook it through. But boy, was she so wrong. And finally, when the time was up, Jennifer realized what a huge mistake she had made. The judges were quick to notice it too. Ramsey even singled her out in front of everyone, saying her dish stood out for all the wrong reasons. Meanwhile, Joe wasted no time in laying it all out in the open too. This lamb is raw, is completely raw. Not exactly a shocker though, right? I could see that one coming from like a mile away. I mean, what was she even thinking? Throwing a lamb chop into a hot pan and expecting it to be done in 10 minutes? I think we're going beyond an amateur mistake here. Safe to say, the lamb was a complete disaster. And when Joe cut into it, this is what he saw. It would be dangerous to serve a piece of lamb like this to a judge. This is raw. The lamb was so raw that you couldn't even tell if someone tried to cook it unless they looked at the pathetic sear on the outside. What made it even worse was the fact that if it were served in a restaurant and someone actually ate it, it'd be a one-way ticket to the ER. This time, Joe's anger was definitely justified. This time. Anyway, he was so pissed that what he said next was totally expected. If it were for me, this is not an elimination round, I would send you home now. Damn, that's gotta sting. Jennifer was left in tears and sure as hell regretted her choice for a long time to come, I bet. But hey, at least one thing's for sure, she won't repeat the same mistake ever again. But up next, I've got a contestant who sure knew how to give tough competition. So for this one, we're heading to season four, where the stakes were higher than ever. But that didn't stop the contestants from whipping up some pretty questionable dishes. And who could be a better example than Howard Simpson? Considered one of the weakest, if not the worst, Howard sure knew how to piss off all the judges with his dishes. But one dish stood out in particular. During the elimination round in episode four, he presented a dish so appalling that Ramsey was genuinely concerned just by looking at it. Did you disappear into the library for half an hour? No, I did not. What is it, please? I mean, I'd ask the same question, cause what was that? Apparently it was poached langoustine and it looked far from appetizing. Citrus salad with a champion vinaigrette, diced mangoes, sliced grapefruit, and just put the langoustine on top. The dish looked like he just tossed in some raw veggies he saw lying around in the kitchen. Or better yet, picked up from the leaf litter outside. Ramsey was obviously pissed, and what did he do? Well, check it out yourselves. Well, I am blown away. I'm shocked. In fact, 
I'm not even gonna eat it. Honestly, Ramsey's reaction was pretty expected. This guy had 60 minutes to whip up an actual dish, and he decided to throw some raw veggies on a plate, give it a fancy name, and call it a dish? What a joke. And his excuse for his lack of creativity was that he was concentrating more on the vinaigrette. But here's the thing. The judges couldn't even see the vinaigrette he was focusing so hard on. Not just Ramsey, but the rest of the judges too. But wait, what Ramsey said next was so brutal that it had to have been playing on repeat in his head for weeks afterwards. You know I'm not a rabbit, and yet you serve me food that's fit for a rabbit hutch. And you expect me to get blown away. I mean, he's not wrong. This dish did look more like rabbit food than human food. So much so that if someone said it was for a rabbit, I'd believe them. And guess what? Ramsey felt so disrespected that he didn't even taste the dish. And well, next it was time for Joe to give his much valued criticism. And you best believe he gave a harder blow than Ramsey. I went out and told everyone how good you were. You're in a landslide. This is a waste of our time. Oh boy. And nope, he didn't stop there. At this point, if it were up to me, I'd throw you out. I put my ass on the line for you, and that's the you give me? Well, this dish ideally should have sent him packing. I mean, what he presented wasn't just a low effort dish with a fancy name, but a disrespect to the culinary art in general. And he was wasting both his fellow contestants' time and the judges. His own too, if you feel charitable enough. But he somehow managed to dodge the bullet that night, but he wasn't the only contestant who didn't deserve the platform. Episode 10, season four, was a hell of a ride for Beamy. And why do I say that? Because during the lemon meringue pie pressure test, he messed up his pie in spectacular fashion. So it was finally his turn to get his pie judged, and Ramsey's first impression was far from impressed. Oh, Beamy. Wow. He sure was wowed, but not in a good way. And when he cut into the pie, good god, things took a turn for the worse. Ramsey couldn't even cut into the pie properly. And you want to know why? Well, I mean... Turns out, the whole pie was mushy and runny on the inside. No wonder he couldn't get a clean cut. It was so bad that Ramsey literally had to bring in two cocktail glasses. And it should be obvious why he needed them, right? That's right, he legit had to pour the pie filling into a glass to actually have a way to put it into his mouth. As for the taste, after all the effort Ramsey put in trying to get a drop of it, well, his reaction should clear things up for you. Me. Oh, he regretted putting that into his mouth for sure. The taste was absolutely appalling and you could see that very well from the look on his face. Apparently, he made the mistake of adding cream of tartar to thicken his curd instead of cornstarch. Like, I can see the logic there, but still. Ramsey was beyond shocked, and not to mention pissed, and his response to Beamy's carelessness was one for the books. What are you trying to do, kill us? Ramsey then told him that there was only supposed to be a teaspoon in the recipe. But when he asked Beamy how much he added, he straight up said he added 10 tablespoons. That's 30 times as much as he needed, for reference, claiming that he messed up and grabbed the wrong ingredient. And, well, I doubt anyone was surprised he got the boot. I guess you could say that you wouldn't want to be him right now. Anyway, Beamy wasn't the only one to mess up a meringue. My last pick is no stranger to messing up his dishes, but this time he messed up so spectacularly that it actually bends the mind. But before that, take a moment to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You could also become a member of the channel by hitting the tab right here. So let's keep the support pouring in, you guys. You have no idea how much I appreciate it. So can you think of more times when contestants serve disgusting dishes on MasterChef? Get in the comments and make your voice heard. And I'll make sure to come back with another exciting video featuring those extra special delicacies. Meanwhile, don't forget to check out my Discord server linked down in the description box. And if you like this video, trust me, the next one is even crazier.